So we're going to be finding volume by cross sections. And there's two formulas that we're going to be using. Integration with respect to x means the cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis. So the clue words for us are cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis. Okay, which means that we're going to be using this formula right here. Integration with respect to y means that we'll see the words cross sections are perpendicular to the y axis. So notice the change of the limits c to d. We're going to get area in terms of y differentiating with respect to y. So for these six examples, for the homework over cross sections for that topic, these are the two formulas that we'll be using. To find the volume of this solid, we have to pay attention to what the base region is. That's like our floor, pan, floor plan. The base of the solid is the region bounded by this equation. So one of the things you might want to do is first of all get a, a visual. So let's graph x squared plus y squared equals 9. So it's going to be a circle with radius of 3. So notice in this problem that we're only given one equation for the base region, the floor plan, if you will. Okay, one equation. Sometimes we're given multiple equations because it just takes multiple equations to create a base region. All right, so we've got that covered. The cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis. So here's the x-axis. Okay, every cross section that I'm going to glue in here, okay, are going to be perpendicular to the x-axis and the face of those cross sections are going to be in the shape of a square. So thinking about squares and the area formula for a square, it might be good for you to somewhere near that word, that face, put in that geometric formula for that figure. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is draw the region, identify the area formula based on the cross section. Then I'm going to put in here at least one visual of how I would end up putting these cross sections in this region. So since the cross regions are perpendicular to the x-axis, I have to start here, continue vertical, so this cross section would start at the top of this circle right here and it would continue vertically down until I stop right here at the bottom of the circle. So this is one side length of the square that I'm going to put in here. That's going to be a 3D shape, so the, the, the cross section is going to pop out at us, but this is going to be one of the dimensions, or the dimension, of the side length of the square. Okay, so we need to know what this is right here, this distance, this vertical distance. So what's going to help us with that is going to be a top curve minus a bottom curve, a top y equation minus a bottom y equation. Well, when you look back at the base region right here, we don't have a, an equation solved for y, but we can certainly take care of that through a little bit of algebra and get this equation solved for y. All right, so back over here, okay, this would just be one cross section. Well, there's going to be a, a, a large number of cross sections from the left x value to the right x value from negative 3 to 3. This is just one representation of one of the cross sections that would fit in here. And notice that as you move to the right, just based on the shape of this graph right here, that if I were to kind of illustrate the, another cross section, say right here, okay, look how much longer this side length is of this square. Okay, so the further you travel to the right, based on the shape of this, the cross sections are going to have a longer side length on the square, which means that the shape okay, is going to come out at you uh, a little bit higher. All right, so it's good to draw the graph, uh, base region, okay, draw in at least one, possibly two, okay, of the representations of a, of a cross section. So let's come back over here and do um, our work. So we're going to find the volume of a solid created by this situation. Okay, perpendicular to the x-axis, I'm going to use this formula. Okay, the big A stands for the area of the base of the cross section. So that's the area of that square. 
but we want the area of the square to be in terms of x, because right now you see the area formula is um, in terms of side length, okay? but we need it in terms of x. Okay, so once we've established the, one of the two formulas we're going to be using for the cross sections, okay, we put that down. The next thing I want to look at is, okay, what's the area formula that we're going to be using and we're going to be customizing? Well, because I saw the word squares, I know that area formula is, is uh, A equals S squared. Okay, comma here. Okay, so the next thing for me to do in order to be able to integrate is to get this side length of the square in terms of X. Okay, so that's what I want to do here. I have to figure out what S is in terms of X's so that I can square it and then integrate it. So I have a little bit of work to do here since the equations aren't solved for Y. So go back to the equation for the circle. Subtract X squared and then extract the roots. So all of that in one step gives plus minus square root of 9 minus X squared. We know the top half of this semicircle is the positive root because we want positive y's in quadrant 1 and 2. So this is y equals square root of 9 minus x squared. And the bottom half of the semicircle would be the negative root because we know y coordinates in qu uh, quadrant 3 and 4 are negative. So y equals negative square root of 9 minus x squared. Okay, now we have two equations that create this bounded region instead of just the one. Okay, so let's figure out what is a representation for the length, say, from here to here. Well, to find that length and make sure it's positive, we're going to do a top curve minus a bottom curve. So that would be this equation minus this equation right here. So the side length is going to be the positive root minus the negative root. I think we can see that if we clean this up, that we're going to have two of the same roots. So collecting these light terms, 2 square root of 9 minus x squared. So this is the side length of each and every one of these cross sections based upon what x value you're at in the region from negative 3 to 3. All right, let's go ahead and customize the integral then, and then either find the answer by calculator or by hand, depending upon what it looks like. All right, so the volume equals, my left limit is negative 3. I won't have cross sections to the left of negative 3, and I won't have cross sections to the right of positive 3. So my limits are negative 3 to 3. Okay, for the area in terms of x, okay, well, I need this area formula, but not with an s. So I'm going to kind of leave the parentheses there for something other than s. Well, s is equal to 2 square root of 9 minus x squared. So that's going to be the area of the base of each of these uh, square faces. Okay, well, how thick are they? Because I want to find the volume. How thick are they? To find the volume in 1, the integral allows us to add them all up. The thickness okay, would be some change in x. This is the definite integral that correctly represents the volume of the solid based on these conditions. All right, and thinking about the room here, and in, in, in the interest of room, I'm going to have to just move to the right. Okay, I'm going to do a little cleanup on the integral, so I don't lose the integral symbol. I'm going to square the 2, get 4, square the square root, get 9 minus x squared. If I have a calculator, I'm probably still going to do this little cleanup and then type this into y1 and use the appropriate keystrokes to find the volume. Um, However, if, if I just look at this integral, it's not difficult to do by hand. What I might do if I am going to do this by hand is I might pull out the constant multiplier of 4 and just integrate 9 minus x squared, evaluating uh, from uh, 3 to negative 3. So certainly that's you know, manageable by hand. Okay, but at this point, to save time, I'm just going to share with you the answer regardless of the way you solve this by calculator or by hand. So that's going to be the volume of the solid right here based on the conditions given. All right, example two, the base of the solid is the region bounded by, this is our floor plan, come over here, draw the picture. y equals x plus 1, and y equals x squared minus 1. 
Okay, notice how this problem has two equations that create your base region. And conveniently, these two equations form a naturally bounded region. Okay. I'm sure my picture is off a little bit because I believe this intersection should fall on the x-axis. Okay. All right, so we, we've taken care of uh, establishing our floor plan here. Uh, the cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis, okay, and they're equilateral triangles. So let me just right here share with you that area formula. Yeah, that's probably something you should memorize. It starts out looking like the square formula, but we multiply this um, s squared by the square root of 3 over 4. So this is the area formula for an equilateral triangle. And just pay attention to the fact that this right here, square root of 3 divided by 4, is just a constant multiplier on s squared. Okay, so we have our base region. The cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis. That tells me to proceed by um, putting in here cross sections from left to right that are vertical. So I'm just going to choose a random x value and go to both curves from that x value. So right here, this is going to be the bottom of the equilateral triangle. So it's going to jump out at, it, at us, um, 3D speaking, with a little point there. And the further you travel to the right, you can see that these cross sections have a longer, a longer base until you travel closer to this point of intersection where this distance right here is smaller and so um, the height of each of those equilateral triangles is decreasing to this endpoint. So just drawing a few. Okay, so if I tried to draw this, okay, that might be something like an equilateral uh, cross section. This one right here would um, look a little bit higher. Okay, something like that. And this one, um, not as high as the previous one I drew, but these are the cross sections right here. Maybe a good thing to do is, is maybe Google this and, and look at a visual of it, because this certainly isn't popping out at you <laughs> like it should. All right, so uh, we have our plan, I think. We know the volume formula in terms of x. Big A of X stands for um, the area of the face of the cross section, which is this formula right here. Okay, so for these problems, establish your formula, establish your area formula that you're going to customize, and at this point I'm going to take advantage of moving the square to 3 over 4 in front of the S squared. Okay, before I can integrate, I need S to be in terms of X, the floor plan, the base region. So let me come over here and say, okay, S is equal to... Well, S is the side length of one of the sides of the equilateral triangle, so that's going to be a top minus bottom situation. Well, the top of every one of these equilateral triangles is always going to touch the linear function, and the bottom's going to touch the quadratic. So the expression that represents that side length in terms of X would be X plus 1 minus, don't forget your parentheses, because you have to distribute that negative, minus the quadratic. Cleaning that up, I'm going to distribute, maybe rearrange. I'm going to have negative x squared plus 1 here. That's a 1 here, and collecting the x. So plus x plus 2. All right, so let's put this into the integral. All right, so we need a and b values. So the x coordinate of the point of intersection here is negative 2. You can find it on the graphing calculator or set these two equations equal. And this x-coordinate right here uh, is 2. And actually, I lied. This is <laughs> negative 1. This x-coordinate is negative 1. All right, so here we're at this point where we have to put in a in terms of x. So I'm going to take the square root of 3 over 4 and put it right here. In my next step, I'm going to pull it in front. I see in the area formula, I need an S squared. Well, I've customized S, and here it is. And don't forget the thickness of each of these cross sections. Okay, studying this real quick. Uh, probably not going to have you guys square this trinomial. A college board wouldn't. That's a lot of algebra. This would probably be a calculator question, or you might not have a calculator, but they would ask you just to set up the integral, which this is what this is. Uh, I think for me, if I'm going to go to the calculator and use this, okay, I probably would pull out the square root of 3 over 4 and multiply my answer at the end by square root of 3 over 4. 
just want to minimize what I put in the calculator. So Y1, put this trinomial square, appropriate keystroke on the home screen. Don't forget to go back and multiply by square root of 3 over 4. The final volume, 81 square root of 3 over 40. And you might want to just pause the video and make sure that you're able to, you know, get these answers right here. That, that right, you're just kind of reviewing the, the keystrokes, too, and getting that extra practice. All right, so the base of the solid is the same as in an example, two. The cross-sections are perpendicular to the x-axis, but now this time the face of the cross-sections are going to be a rectangle. And, but they're all going to have the same height, a height of 3. Okay, so if I start from the far left and put a few random cross sections in here, okay, this is going to be the, the um, length of, of the rectangle. Okay, now the height, as it jumps out at you, is going to be um, all the same. I'm going to come out 3, 3 units, whatever that is. So if I travel to the right, this cross section has a longer length, this rectangle does. As you can see, the distance gets greater between the two curves. So this is how long the rectangle is, but it's still only going to be measured at a height of 3 coming out at you. Let's draw in another one as well right here. So as we get closer and closer to the right end point, the end of the interval, you can see that um, the lengths of all these rectangles are getting smaller. but for this one, the heights are all going to be the same no matter what the length is. So it kind of has a flat top, unlike the previous ones. Okay, so let's get our formula ready. Uh, perpendicular to the x-axis, we know which formula to use. Okay, the area formula that we're going to use is for a rectangle. That's length times width or base times height. So because they use the word height, I think I'll just use the area formula BH. So area equals BH. But they gave us additional information. They told us that the height, this H value, is 3. That's a constant. We can go ahead and pull it in here because that's not changing. Okay, so let's keep in mind that the height is 3. Because what's different about this problem from the previous two is, notice that this area formula has two different variables, whereas in example one and two, we only had an S, a side length. So we have to have information about all the variables that make up that geometric formula. So the height is three, so we still have work to do. Okay, too many Bs. <laughs> so what is an expression that represents the base, or if you will, the length, the length of each rectangle? Well, that's going to be a top minus bottom. So if I'm standing at this x, the length of the base of the rectangle is going to be top minus bottom here. If I'm standing at this x right here, the length of that base of that rectangle is going to be top curve minus bottom curve. So b for the dimension of the rectangle is, um, I think, what we found previously. The linear function minus the quadratic function. And just stealing it from example 2 cleaned up, I have this right here. Okay, we're ready to go. Volume equals uh, same limits from the previous example, negative 1, 2. Okay, this is the formula I want to put in here with respect to x. Okay, but I know the height is 3, so I'm just going to multiply h and b together. So it's 3 times quantity, negative x squared plus x plus 2. The integral is set up. We're ready to proceed. Calculator, no calculator. You can see that this would likely be a no calculator question. You can take the 3 out front, the anti, find the antiderivative, evaluating at the, the limits, and you have your answer. Okay, and just uh, in the interest of time, let's say that the answer is 27 halves. You might want to check it on the calculator. Or if you feel like you're deficient in uh, finding values of integrals by hand, you might want to just go through and um, and, and do those calculations and see if it confirms with 27 halves.